Hey guys, we are going to be looking at software today. Software, uh, carrying on from the previous videos, but we're going to be looking at three areas. First of all, we're going to look at standalone versus integrated software. Then we're going to look at various types of software and of course FOSS or OSS, which means open source software or FOSS, free open source software. Let's get started. Standalone versus integrated. So what is the difference? Well, standalone software is basically when you purchase each application separately. So for example, you purchase just Microsoft Excel or just Microsoft Word or just Microsoft PowerPoint. So you purchase just the individual program and you use just that program. So that's standalone software. It's not put together inside of a suite, for example, and we discussed suite in a previous video. Whereas integrated software is one one complete package like an office suite with everything put together that's an integrated package so what is the difference between these two okay now we know that purchasing them uh, separately as opposed to buying a, a suite together it gives us a couple of options here so if you are purchasing standalone software just on its own it can be relatively more expensive to purchase them separately, okay, because you're buying each one on its own and it actually starts to add up and become more than what it's worth in terms of a, a whole integrated package. And you probably will need to integrate data at some point, so you're going to need one of the other programs because they all work together, okay. So as I've said, to purchase uh, integrated software is obviously a lot more cost effective. The best part is that there's a consistent interface across the packages. So Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, the ribbon is the same, the icons are the same. So it's very easy to learn and work with the different packages. You don't have to learn a new skill every time you buy a new package, all right? And they're designed to integrate with each other. That's the whole point of integrated software. All right, so that's the difference between standalone and integrated software. Short and sweet. Let's move on to types of software. Right, so we're gonna look at three different types of software. We can look at freeware, shareware, and proprietary, proprietary software. Try to say that, proprietary software. We can look at those three. So let's have a look at freeware. So what is freeware? Okay, freeware is free. That's the best part. It's completely free. There is no need to purchase a license or to buy the software. If someone's trying to sell you freeware, you are a sucker, dude. Don't buy it. Uh, there's no need to purchase a license. You may distribute the software freely. You may not sell the software. Obviously, it's freeware. Okay, so you can give it away and share it with as many people as you like. It's all good. So that's freeware. It's pretty cool. Then we have shareware. Okay, so shareware, a little bit different. Shareware is free to download and install, okay, which is great, and you install the program. You have full access to the program for a limited time. That's okay, so a limited time could be like a week or two weeks or 30 days, for example. A lot of, pro a lot of programs you can download, install it, you can use it for up to a month, okay? But then, after that month, which is actually like a trial period, then you have to buy the program, okay? You've got to buy the program because it gets restricted. So they'll give you full access for a month. After a month, they take away all the cool bells and whistles, and then you're like, oh man, I can't do anything unless you buy the program. And you either buy the program or you buy a license to use the program. So that's the difference between shareware and freeware. See, freeware is free. Shareware is the company sharing their software with you. See it that way. You're not doing any sharing. Okay, so a lot of students in exams, they go, oh, shareware, you can share with other people. No, that's not what the sharing part. The share is from the company who made the program. They're sharing it with you. That's how it works, okay. Proprietary software. Proprietary software is commercial software. It's not free you have to buy it you have to purchase that software it ain't free okay so it's not shareware it's not freeware it's not trialware it's a full version of a product you have to purchase so you've got to purchase the full software or you can purchase a license to use the software all right so there's a difference there let's have a look at the next part which is open source software now open source software or also oss 
as we call it, or FOSS, free open source software. And the reason it's called FOSS is because it is software that is free. It is completely free. Best part about that. It also means because the source code is open, open source, that the source code is available. That means the code that the programmer or programmers use to create that software is accessible and you can access the code and you can see how the program was made and change the code if you wanted to. It's also allowed to be freely distributed. You can distribute it to as many people as you like. You may not sell it, okay. So a couple of the benefits or the advantages of open source software. First of all, we already know it's free. Another benefit is that the code can be modified. So people can take a program and change it to the way they want it to work or look. It's pretty cool. And of course, if you don't have a lot of money in your bank, it is a great alternative to proprietary software. It really, really is. Okay, have a look at some of the Office uh, suites like LibreOffice, OpenOffice, fantastic products. A couple of the downsides of uh, FOSS or OSS uh, open source software is that it may not be reliable. Remember, this is not a commercial product that's being maintained on a professional level in terms of money being made or profit being made. So it may not be 100% reliable. There may be some glitches and bugs in the code, okay? Another thing which is very often the case is that tech support and documentation may not always be available. And that is true. Uh, you will find that if you download open source software and you try and play with it and use it and see what it does, and you're trying to get help on this or figure out what it does, it's a little bit tricky to get help or find the right documentation because people don't have time. The guys, they make the program, they don't have time to go around the help manual. You've got to figure it out. And sometimes it's a bit of a problem. And of course, it has to be downloaded online. You can't go and just buy it at a shop or get a disk somewhere. It's basically online. 99% of open source software is online and you've got to download that. So you've got to have internet, you've got to have space on your computer, all that stuff to be able to use it. All right, so that's open source software. Now, a couple of examples that you may or may not know of open source software. Let's have a look. We've got Firefox. Did you know that's open source? We're Notepad++, fantastic program, also open source. Ubuntu, based on Linux, okay? We spoke about that in a previous video. There's GIMP, the graphic image manipulation program. LibreOffice, I mentioned earlier. That little traffic cone, you got to know that one. That's one of the most popular video players in the world. It's called VLC, Video LAN. And the last one is a cool 3D manipulation program called Blender. You can do all kinds of stuff with that. So I hope you've learned something about all the different types of software. In the next lesson, we're going to look at licensing.